Well, the Aussie uh, casually mentions that he's hitchhiking to London as if it were a, a little promenade in Hard, Hyde Park in London, the Zada West wonders. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe this chance a hookup with the Aussie is uh, a cosmic synchronistic sign uh, from the guardian of the hashish trail. Uh, deposited this crude beast in my life and uh, maybe it's kind of like those Australian sheepdogs he'll just like kind of bark behind my ass all the way to England irritably repetitively but uh, maybe with him I could maintain my motivation to actually do it you know, get to England, huh? Uh, and the Zadu S, uh, she ponders the <laughs> horrible alternative of getting her teeth repaired in the frontier. I mean, put bluntly, uh, the blacksmiths, uh, they're their only chance to get a tooth pulled. Yeah, and these guys are freaky? I mean, they, they make shoes for horses. And, um, oh, they make bullets, <laughs> revolvers, <clears throat> rifles, um, AK-47s. You give uh, any weapon down at the Khyber Pass, down at uh, Torcom, and uh, they will make generic copies of it. <laughs> The British, Russians, and Americans <clears throat> learned all about that, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they'll pull degenerated teeth. Uh, pliers kind of crude. You know, they use them to take uh, the horseshoe uh, things off. And uh, mysterious smithy tools. Like, um, well, so, look. <laughs> you know that horrible alternative, huh? Zada West figures she better cultivate a relationship Ooh. Um, with Ozzy uh, to uncover what possible deep meaning underlies his coming into her hash den. So, um, I mean, with a weak smile... Um, she resolves to chat him up. Uh, she, the Aussie's the first Westerner she's hung out with. Well, besides Sphinx, and he's, even he's an Egyptian. Um, yeah, first Westerner for the last two years since 19, uh, since Kathmandu, huh? And uh, she figures she's got to get used to talking to white people again, so therefore she inquires. Uh, what is the wildlife like in the Alice? I hear you have camels. Uh, well, as Ozzy unlaces his construction boots uh, and belches, farts, <coughs> he inquires, Hey, mate, you ever hit a kangaroo with your car? This grotesque image horrifies the Zadu S. You know, she's delicate and she becomes speechless. She melts. Uh, that's it. Well, fortunately, like a cool desert breeze, Nazim comes in, the 12-year-old son in Rumbai of Bay, with a tray of all the accoutrements for green tea and uh, a little platter of walnuts, hazelnuts, almonds, oh, and a packet of Britannica biscuits. Uh, the well-mannered Londoner pours a cup of tea for Ozzy first before she serves herself and uh, 
the Aussie warmly responds, Hey, mate, um, I'm feeling like packing my last big chunk of hashish into this here hookah, mate. You want to wanna have a smoke with me, mate? Yeah. Yes. Oh, she's practicing that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and they enjoy a luxuriant meltdown, hubble bubble together. And sure enough, the Aussie invites the Zadu S to hitchhike with him to London. She'll be right, mate. No worries about that. Uh, yeah. And um, Zadu S, she agrees with enthusiasm. She laughs when she pictures them together as a traveling couple. Um, and she inquires diplomatically, um, perhaps you might lighten up your travel gear a little bit before we hit the Iran border. I mean, it's a long hitchhike to Istanbul. She's done it before. I mean, Persia is a large country. It's 2,000 kilometers to cross. Yeah, sure, you cross it. Tarbati Jam, Mashhad. It's like a, three days. If you're lucky, you get into Tehran. Try to avoid that monster, ugly metropolis of millions. Get out of there. Just go around the town. Get up to Tabriz and then the Turkish border at Bazargan, Mount Ararat. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, no private cars. She's trying to turn the Aussie on here. Look, no private cars. The only thing we're going to get rides on are petrol tankers. Oil tankers. Well, there's a few British bed, uh, British manufactured Bedford lorries. And uh, then there's smugglers going in, in, in Mercedes, but they won't be picking us up. And long distance buses? Oh, well, that's really the way to go. Yeah. Well, you know, that costs money, and, well, the Aussie, he's down to $100 worth of British pounds in the Zadu S. Well, she's hiding $4, but she doesn't talk about that. I mean, she left her stash with uh, Peace Ollie back in the uh, Peace Hotel in Kandahar. Remember? Yeah. Well, yeah, the... Uh, endless lifts between petrol tankers, she hints, arching a, uh, an aristocratic eyebrow inquisitively to watch for any hopeful reaction. <laughs>